Hey Lake Point Junior Highs, good morning and welcome to our family interactive experience. My name is Pastor Ethan and I'm excited to be with you and your family this morning. I hope you're doing well and staying busy. Maybe you've started some online school work, picked up some extra roles and responsibility around the house, or maybe you've had the time to build the most epic blanket fort you've ever built in your entire life. But most of all, I hope that you've been able to spend some extra time together as a family and have had some meaningful and intentional discussions together. If I can be authentic and honest with you, I'm, I'm getting pretty restless. I, I love being outside, it's, it's what energizes me. In fact, just going outside for me is often the difference between a really great day and a not so great day. And so it's been a little tough for me to, to have to be isolated indoors and not spend time at the park with my daughter or just going to Point Pelee or, or Two Creeks for a walk. And maybe you're feeling restless too, like you have all this energy to burn but nowhere to burn it, and you're driving your siblings and your parents crazy. If that's you, I get it. If it's not you and it's a sibling or, or your son or daughter, my heart goes out to you. It's, it's definitely a season where we have to create a lot of new normals. So I'm praying for you as you and your family are establishing new routines and schedules and trying to figure out what this new normal is. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. In a moment, I'll give you a quick overview of what this morning will look like. But before we do, I want to tell you about this week's family challenge. We are going to have a family talent show. So you'll record your talent and post the video um, on our Lake Point Junior High Facebook group. And there's only one rule. Um, and that rule is there must be at least one parent and one student in the video. Uh, a couple ideas to get you started. You could sing a song. You could recite a poem, uh, maybe even from memory. You could perform a skit with your whole family. Maybe you know how to, to juggle or, or to solve a Rubik's Cube really fast. Maybe you know how to play an instrument or you've got some sweet scooter skills. Um, whatever it might be, we want to see your talent. Even if you don't think you have any talents, just video something, anything really. I don't really think I'm an all that interesting person, but I want to show you one of my very few talents, okay? I can chug a bottle of water really, really fast, like lightning speed fast. My fastest time has been three seconds. Now, it's been a while since I've done this, so just in case it goes wrong, I do have a spare t-shirt with me, um, uh, just in case. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, I'm just remembering now how much it hurts for water to pass through my system that quickly. But I am really, really excited to see your family's talent. So this coming Wednesday, we will go live on our junior high Facebook group at 10 a.m. and I'll announce the winner of our family talent show. Okay, get cozy on the couch or wherever you may be watching from while well, I'll tell you about what this morning will look like. In a moment, you'll jump into week three of our series called Rooted. It's a series about how we can stand firm and welcome whatever change life brings us when we're rooted in an unchanging God. This week, 
we're gonna look at this powerful truth, that God can change the way you see change. I mean, right now, we're in our living rooms, we're isolated and maybe even feeling alone. Imagine what it would be like if God changed the way we viewed change and we could actually come together amidst isolation. We're all experiencing change right now and we often see these new changes as obstacles. We often say things like, I can't wait until I can hang out with my friends again. But what if God changed the way we saw change so that we could see new opportunities through obstacles? Change causes us to feel uncertain about so many different things, but, but what if God could change the way we see change so that we can have confidence through uncertainty? And so this morning, as we head into part three of our series, we're gonna see that this is something that God can do. He can help change our perspective when we experience change in our lives. After the teaching video, one at a time, you'll see a series of discussion questions on your screen. These are helpful questions that your parents will ask you to create meaningful um, discussion. Feel free to press pause and take as much time as you need to walk through each question. I'll check back in with you before and after the discussion questions to provide you with some further instructions. So focus your attention this morning on part three of our Rooted series. Let me ask you a question. What was your least favorite daily task that you had to do when you were a kid? Brushing your teeth, taking a shower, <laughs> washing your hair, putting away your clothes, cleaning your room. Sometimes change can feel a lot like that thing your parents made you do when you were a kid. That thing you knew you needed to do to make your life better, but that you just didn't want to do. My guess is, if I asked you right now to tell me one thing in your life that you know needs to change, you could answer me in about three seconds. We all could. That's because all of us know that there are some really great things we could be doing and some really not so great things we need to stop doing in our lives. We all know where we need change, but yet we all still struggle to make that change happen. Maybe you know you need to change the way you eat because surviving solely on Doritos and Mountain Dew isn't the best for your body, but you simply don't want to change your diet to make it happen. Maybe you know you need to change the way you treat your stepmom but it feels a lot easier to just keep being mean and sarcastic instead. Maybe you know you need to make a change in your friend group because the friends you have aren't leading you to make great choices, but you're worried there may not be other friends out there if you do. Or maybe you know you need to change your grades at school, but you don't wanna put in the effort and study or go to tutoring to make that happen. Or maybe you know you wanna start taking some steps towards living a life for God, but actually doing that feels more like an inconvenience than anything else. Our point is this, knowing the areas we need to change in our lives isn't hard, but actually making those changes is really difficult. Even though we know that the changes would be better for our lives, we still can't seem to make ourselves do them. So what's the deal? Well, the past couple of weeks, we've talked about how God, who never changes, helps us stay rooted to the ground so that we'll be secure through the changes life brings us. I think sometimes we avoid change because the uncertainty that comes with hard changes makes us worry that the roots that have kept us safe and steady may no longer hold us up. But I think the biggest obstacle we face when trying to change is the fact that real change is really hard. It takes effort. It takes perseverance. It takes a lot of time and energy. And because of that, it can feel a whole lot easier not to do it. It's easier to act like we don't care about the things we know need to change than to actually put ourselves out there and try to change them. It's always easier to blend in and keep things the way they are than to risk standing out because we've made a change in our lives. It's easier to seem like we're going along with everyone else than to make a change that others might not understand. It's easier to stay where we are than risk getting overwhelmed with the effort to make a change. But I think that when we view making changes in our lives as some kind of chore or burden, we miss out on living the best possible lives God has for us. I think we need to change the way we see change. 
There are some great pieces of wisdom about change throughout the Bible, and one of them can be found in the book of James. James, the author of the book, wrote a letter to the 12 tribes of Israel. These were God's chosen people, believers who had just been separated and spread out all over the region. In other words, they had just gone through a major change, something they didn't really want to do, but it had to happen. And I think what James said to them about the change they experienced can help us as we try to make changes in our own lives today. Here's how he started. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. James started this letter by reminding the people of Israel what we talked about in week one. Troubles will come. It's not if challenges will happen in our lives, it's when. And because of that, we need to know how to handle them well. James knew that change was bound to happen, and he wanted everyone to know that they didn't have to be defeated by it. Instead, he told them to consider an opportunity for great joy. In other words, instead of seeing the changes you need to make in your life as difficult or overwhelming, see them as opportunities for potential joy. See them as chances for God to do something that will make your life better. James went on, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Do you know what the word endurance means? It means building your strength over time. When you push past the pain, discomfort, and stress to make the change you're working on, you're making it easier for yourself to do it the next time. In other words, practice makes perfect. The more changes you make to improve your life, the more you're developing an endurance to help you face more changes as you grow. When you build endurance, you're stretching and strengthening the roots that keep you steady and secure through the ups and the downs of life. Why is that important? Well, let's see how James wraps this up. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. You see, making those changes in your life, putting in the effort and building up the endurance to do it, isn't really about the change itself. It's about your growth as a person. Every time you make an effort to make a change that will improve your life, you're growing as a person. You're growing your roots. You're growing in your faith. So not only do you change, but your faith changes as well. Just like any muscle, it becomes stronger the more you exercise it. And stepping into change will help you become the person that God wants you to become. Someone who is mature and complete, who doesn't lack anything in their life. Stepping into change helps you become rooted in God and who he wants you to be. You see, what I think James wanted us to understand is this. God can change the way you see change. But honestly, sometimes change feels so messy that we can't seem to make sense of it. What's this a picture of? It doesn't make sense at all, does it? It just looks like a weird mess. It's kind of like how we sometimes feel when change is happening in our lives. But when we allow God to change the way we see things, we may just be surprised at what he reveals to us. God can change the way we see things. He can change the way we see change. So instead of seeing change as negative, we can view it through the lens James gave us in the Bible as an opportunity for more joy, endurance, growth, and faith in our lives. So here's what I want you to try this week. Let God change the way you see change. Think of the things you know you need to change as opportunities rather than chores, and put in a little effort to actually make that change, to grow in faith and maturity in that part of your life. To start, I want you to pick just one area of your life that you know needs to change. Maybe it's the amount of time you spend in front of a screen, or your friend group, or a habit you have, or the way you treat someone in your life. Pick out just one thing that you've been struggling to change and ask God to help you change the way you see it. Ask him to help you see it as an opportunity for something good, something better in your life. And then make one step to change that thing in your life this week. It doesn't have to be a big, huge, life-altering step. Remember, real change takes time. It takes endurance. So take a small step toward building your endurance this week. Maybe it's sitting with a new group of people one day at lunch, or doing 30 more minutes of homework one night, or putting your phone away for a few hours, or going out of your way to do an extra chore for your parents this week. Whatever it is, just make one small step towards the change you wanna make in your life. And then next week, make one more. 
and then another, and then another, until one day you look up and realize that you've made the change. You've built that muscle, and next time, change won't seem so scary. Remember, God can change the way you see change. When our lives are rooted in Him, the changes we're struggling to make won't seem so difficult. As you go, I want you to think about this question. What's one change I'm struggling to make in my life right now? That was such an encouraging lesson that when our lives are rooted in God, the changes we're struggling to make won't seem so difficult to do. I remember when I was in grade six, my parents created a few different chores for my brothers and I to do throughout the week. And on the fridge was a calendar that identified who was in charge of doing what chore and when they were supposed to do it. So for example, we would have to take out the garbage and recycling, or we would have to do all the dishes and dry them and put them away after dinner. Or another one was to make sure that the wood box was always full because we had a wood burning stove to keep our house warm. And if I can be honest with you, I really didn't like doing my chores. It didn't matter what I had to do, I, I didn't really like doing it. And, and looking back, I think it's because I viewed them as a burden. I viewed them as something that was unpleasant and, and as something that was keeping me away from spending time with friends. I mean, I remember the first time my parents told us that we had to do these chores. That was a big change and I didn't like it. But I think if I would have been able to change the way I viewed and understood that new change, I would have been able to process it and go through it much better. Looking back, I wish I would have asked God to help me change the way I saw my chores. It likely would have saved me from a lot of temper tantrums. As a family this morning, it's my hope that you're able to see that God can help you change the way you view change, and that through this new normal of our way of doing life, that it would actually bring your family closer to each other and closer to God. Parents, I'm now turning this over to you. In a moment, you'll see some questions on your screen Please press pause and take the time you need to facilitate meaningful discussions with your junior high student. When you finish your discussion time, refer back to this video for some closing remarks.
I hope you had some meaningful conversation together around this truth that God can change the way we see change. And so before we close today, I want to remind you that on the Lake Point app under the Family Resources section, we have daily devotionals available that go along with our Rooted series. Also, don't forget to upload your family talent show videos to our Lake Point Junior High Facebook group. If you aren't part of that group, just search Lake Point Family Church dash junior high and request to join or send me a text at the number on the screen and I'll make sure you get an invitation to join our online junior high community. To close our time this morning, take two minutes and pray together as a family. Pray that God would change the way you see change. And so have a wonderful week, friends. We will see you next week.